Today's episode is Build Yourself a Slide Rule. What's a slide rule, you ask? No, not that kind of slide. Think back to when you were forced to learn multiplication tables back in kindergarten. So the reason for memorizing multiplication tables was because you didn't want to carry around a whole table of multiplications everywhere you go. So having them in your head is a much better advantage. The only downside to that is it doesn't tell you anything about how to multiply the numbers that are in between, such as decimals. And so you probably learned long multiplication, but again, that takes time and you've got to write it down on paper. So the question is, is there a much faster, more convenient way of doing it? And the answer is yes, it's a pocket calculator. <laughs> Unfortunately, there was a time when the pocket calculator had not yet been invented, and so people had to come up with other ways of quickly multiplying numbers. You'll notice that the, the numbers in this multiplication table have certain colors given to them, and there's a reason for that. If you take a look at the number 12, for example, there are many different ways that you can get the same number out of the multiplication table. You can get 12 by taking either 2 times 6, or 3 times 4, or 4 times 3, or 6 times 2. And so you see that there's a lot of redundancy in the table. And I've drawn little lines in each color that show a whole range of ways that you can multiply two numbers to get the same number. And if you include decimals, uh, you also get a whole range in between. Okay, so I'm going to fade out the numbers and replace them with little dots just to avoid clutter. You'll notice that if we look at these lines and just shrink all of the dots along the line, we can consolidate all of the information in the table into a single line. The multiplication table has a lot more information than it really needs. Because again, you have so many different ways that you can multiply numbers to get the same number. So what does all of this mean? Well, let's take a look at the old good old multiplication table again. It would be nice if we could find a way to um, straighten out these lines. And there's a reason why we would want to do that. The trick is you actually stretch the number axes so that they're no longer to scale. And if you distort them in just the right way, Ta-da! You notice you have straight lines of solutions. Everywhere along one of these straight lines, the multiplication table would have the same number. So how does that help us? Well, let's say we wanted to multiply 2 times 4. I would go over 2 on the x-axis of the multiplication scale and up by 4, and that would put me on a certain line. But that would be exactly the same as if I followed the line up to where it intersects the y-axis at 8. So 2 times 4 is 8. That's pretty obvious to everyone. But notice I didn't need this whole table of values in order to figure that out. If I just slide the yellow scale up like this, notice all I have to do to figure out what 2 times 4 is, is go up 2 along the white scale, and then take an identical copy of the scale, and start it where the white scale was at 2, and go up another distance of 4 along the yellow scale, and voila! The white scale tells me the number that is the product of the two. So this is a really wonderful, wonderful trick to know. And I'm going to now show you how you actually build one of these things. You want to start with some wooden trim. You can get this at most anywhere, Home Depot or any kind of hardware store, and you would like to get trim that is at least one inch wide and get at least 56 inches worth of trim. And then you'll also need to get a small wooden uh, plank for the base that is four inches wide by nine inches long. And the thickness, it shouldn't be too terribly thick because again, your building was basically a, uh, a glorified ruler out of this. So if you can find some thin wood, that will do the trick just fine. If you can't find the 4 inch by 9 inch wooden plank, you can always add 36 inches to your wooden trim. And uh, you can use that as a base instead. So here's what you'll do. You'll take your base, and you'll begin by cutting two 9 inch long pieces of your trim. 
and wood gluing them to the sides of the base as shown. And here's where if you don't have the 4x9 inch piece of wood for the base, you can improvise and line up nine 4 inch pieces of your trim for your base. And then when you glue the long 9 inch pieces down, your base will be held together. All your base are belong to us. All your base are belong to us. All your base. All your base. All your base are belong to us. Okay, next you'll want to cut out two four inch long pieces of your trim and two six inch long pieces. And you want to line the four inch long pieces so that they are not quite all the way to the end. Um, but half an inch away from the end and that way you'll have exactly six inches in between and if you've cut all the pieces in advance you can just use the six inch pieces to gauge where you should put the uh, the dark brown region. And notice that the six inch pieces you want to offset those just an eighth of an inch in from the piece underneath them and the reason for that is that these pieces will create a um, a little bit of overhang to hold the slide rule inside. So this, the actual sliding ruler is going to go underneath these pieces and that's why you need to offset them in just a little bit so that the uh, slide rules don't come out. So now you're going to cut out two more nine inch pieces of your trim and then you want to print out the following image and I'll leave a link in the description of the video to a higher resolution image of this. The image is at 300 dpi and so the image that you print out should be about three inches wide by nine inches long. And cut out the two slide rules that you see from the printout and paste them to the top of these pieces of trim. Then you put the two sliding rulers inside of your slide rule and voila! you have made yourself your very own slide rule. And now for how to use your slide rule. In this example we're going to be multiplying 3.7 times 6.9 and if you work that out on your calculator it's approximately 25.5 uh, rounded to the nearest one decimal place. So here's what you do. You take your slide rule and slide up to 3.7 on the first ruler and then look along the second ruler until you see the mark for 6.9 and see what number that corresponds to on the first ruler. And you'll see that it's 25.5. Now notice that creating the slide rule required us to find a function in order to stretch the axes of that multiplication table in such a way that the ISO curves, uh, ISO coming from the Latin word meaning same, so those were the lines along which the multiplications were all the same number, we had to find a way to stretch the axes in such a way that those lines became straight. So as always, I like to challenge my viewers. So here's a challenge for you to think about. Just consider the ISO curve for the number 12. Uh, you can graph that as y equals 12 divided by x. And what you need to do is find a function that will stretch your axes. So you need to find f of x so that f of 12 over x is m f of x plus b. In other words, the equation of a straight line. And if you already know the answer, don't give it away. If you already know the answer to this, um, I'll give the more advanced viewers a, a bigger challenge, and that is, you know how to create an ordinary slide rule, but what about a slide rule that instead of multiplication does exponentiation? How would you do that?